With us now, Senator Joe Lieberman of Connecticut. Uh, you just heard uh, the White House top advisor on such things saying that it is likely that both the House and Senate will finally come up with a, some kind of a health care bill that has some sort of public option in it. What's your take? Uh, I hope not. Um, in other words, uh, I'm all for health care reform. Um, it, it, we have a system that needs fixing, but we've got some more urgent problems than that. And the first most urgent is to fix our economy, to get it creating jobs again. And I think that a public option will actually hurt uh, the economic recovery and our long-term uh, fiscal situation because it will end up causing the government to raise taxes, will probably raise premiums, or it will put us further into debt. You know, the public option came out of nowhere. If you look at last year's presidential campaign, Bob, no mention of it. The goal has always been two goals. One is make health insurance more affordable and two, extend it uh, to people who don't have it now. Uh, the public option, I think, was raised in the last year by people who really want to have a government-controlled health insurance system. That's their right. I think they're wrong. But it's not necessary, as President Obama has said over and over again, to achieve the goals that he has. So I, I hope it's not in there at the end. Well, you caught the attention of a lot of people last week when you said that, uh, yes, you might vote to allow the bill to come to the Senate floor with the public option in it, but that you might join the Republicans in filibustering it if, if it came to that to keep it from including a public option in the final version. Is yeah. That, is that accurate? Yeah. I'm not going to uh, filibuster to stop the debate on health care reform from beginning because I want to have that debate. I want to have health care reform. I want to be able to say yes. There's so many good things we can do to make uh, health insurance more affordable and to extend it to uh, people who don't have it now. But I feel so strongly about the creation of another government health insurance entitlement, uh, 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 the government going into the health insurance business. I think it's such a mistake that uh, I would use the power I have as, as a single senator to um, stop a final vote. There's, but there's, wouldn't that mean that, uh, that you might wind up with nothing instead of something? Yeah, but I'd say to the people who are all of a sudden making the public option, a government health insurance company, the litmus test here, they're stopping us from getting something done. There is a, br this is classic mm -hmm. Washington today, Bob. There is broad bipartisan support for health care delivery reforms, for pushing the insurance companies, for instance, to, to give insurance to people who have pre existing illness, no cap on lifetime benefits, for extending health insurance to people who don't have it. All of a sudden, if you're not for this government health insurance company, you're, you're, you're against health care reform. I'd say to them, don't stop us from getting something important and good done for but the American people. But is what people. you're also saying is that nothing is better than a government health insurance or a, a health insurance reform that includes a public option. Nothing is better than that. Well, the truth is that nothing is better than that because I, I think we ought to follow, if I may, the, uh, the doctor's oath here in Congress as we deal with health care reform. Do no harm. And I'm afraid, listen, amazingly, nobody's talked about it. The Congressional Budget Office said on Thursday when the House Democrats put out their health uh, care reform plan with a public option in it, that the public plan would end up charging higher premiums than the average premiums charged by the commercial health insurance companies. Now, why would we want to do that? Why would we, the Congressional Budget Office has also said, if the government creates a public plan, the public is going to be on the line. When it runs a deficit, as it surely will, the public, the taxpayers, will have to pay for it. I'm going to ask you this question because uh, I want to give you a chance to respond to okay. it. Some of your critics say that the reason that you are so dead set against the public option is because there are so many insurance companies headquartered in your home state in Connecticut and they've been some of your biggest supporters. Mm -hmm. What have they given you this year? $400,000? Something like that. Uh, Does that have anything to do with your position on uh, the public option. It, it, no. Uh, you know, I wish people would come out and debate me on the public option instead of uh, questioning my motives. If they looked at the record, I have never hesitated 
to get tough on insurance companies when I thought they were wrong. I, when I was Attorney General of Connecticut, I filed an antitrust action against the Connecticut insurance companies. A few years ago, uh, when there was a patient bill of rights in, in the Senate, which the insurance companies opposed, I supported it. Right now, I've said that I will support the removal of the antitrust exemption that insurance companies have. Uh, that's not the reason, but I, but I will say this. This recommendation of a public option, a government health insurance company, takes our government down a road that we've never gone down before. In other words, we believe in a market economy. It, it's, it's what's created the great American middle class, but it doesn't have a conscience. When it behaves badly, we regulate it, uh, companies. We sue them. We, I've been angry at oil companies. Uh, I never <laughs> had the idea that the government should go into the oil business to make oil companies behave better. I think this would be a terrible mistake.